Well, good morning, everyone. This is Chris Dew, um, Pop Doc Product Manager, and I'm excited to spend some time with you today talking about accessing historical Dynamics GP data right inside of Dynamics 365 Business Central. So we're going to jump right into it today. I'm going to I'm going to keep this pretty uh, back and forth. I guess we're going to do a couple slides, and then we're going to spend a lot of time in in the product and showing you some of the tools that you're going to have at your disposal when you are ready to talk about this conversation. So I guess maybe even before, oh, I jumped ahead a little quick here. There we go. Um, it's just a quick agenda, kind of what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to go through a few terms. We're going to kind of talk about an overall migration type strategy. And then I'm actually probably going to, I might mix this up a little bit in here. I'm gonna kind of really get in and show you what this new tool is going to do for you today. Oh, second, look like somebody maybe is having issues. Okay, so um, again, one of the scenarios, what are we talking about today, right? There's many of you that are either have been on GP for a long time. Some people ha have, you know, plans to be on GP for another, another year or two, another five years, another 10 years, whatever it may be, um, there's there's something that, again, is we're starting to think about this more. Again, I have over 25 years of, of Dynamics GP experience. And again, we just are trying to prepare our, our customers for when they are uh, ready to choose another solution. And in this case, uh, we're gonna be talking today about when when that solution is business central that you're deciding to, to move to. So a couple of things that we're going to bring up in this conversation, right? Microsoft does have something called cloud migration tool for business central to take some GP data to, um, to business central. So what kind of data is that? Maybe just to start with that, that, that data is primarily master records, right? So your customers, your vendors, um, your accounts, some of those kinds of things. Um, it also will move over some opening balances. So those are the kinds of things it moves. But the biggest things, right, is it doesn't really address that history, right? If you've been using GP for 10 years or 20 years, or again, 25 years like like me, um, you probably have a lot of data in there and, and there's some value in, in that data that you don't wanna necessarily move without, you know, without bringing in huge costs to move it in, because you can, right? You can use a tool like Smart Connect. Smart Connect is a great tool for, for integration and migration, and you could move all that data, but the problem is, is you have to move that into open transactions, and then you have to do all of those, you know, year-end closes and those, those kinds of things again, which most people don't want to go through, you know, 20 years of that. Okay. So anyway, just to just to kind of let you know what that, that standard Microsoft tool out of the box will do. Okay, another term I wanna bring up. Again, some people get scared when they see this term. Some people may, maybe have been you know, embracing it a little bit more lately, but Azure Data Lake, and really all this is, is it's something, in, it's called a storage account, if you will, um, where we can store undefined data. It's in your Azure account, right? So the beautiful part about this, right, is that we E1 or Microsoft or whoever, they don't have access to it. It's something that you grant um, an access to a tool like PopDoc so that we can we can read and write data to there. So again, don't be scared of it. It's just a place where we can store. Um, it, it could be, you know, as simple as just like CSV files, which is a lot of what we're going to be doing today, but even more complex, right? We might be extracting out, if you're using document attached, for example, we might be extracting out all of the documents into you know, Excel files and Word files and PDFs and images. So those are the kinds of things, right? We can store any of that information in data lake. It doesn't have to be just one type of file. Okay, and then the last kind of term we're gonna talk about for a lot of the session today is on the PopDuck Data Lake Upload Tool. This is a new tool that's that's just launching and it is really changing the game on how we can approach uh, this migration scenario and really simplifying um, the approach that's taken to moving that data from your on-prem system into the cloud where we can access it. So let's let's jump right in. Um, I'm 
just very quickly, um, I just wanted to talk about this, is no matter where your data is, right, a number of you have it on-premise today, some of you have it hosted in, in Azure, maybe it's in a virtual machine there, or um, the, the rare case where it might be sitting in Azure SQL. Many of you have it hosted with another, um, a third party, right? You may have it in there, or even some of you may have, have more of a cloud-based solution, like I gave an example of like Power GP online, right? So there's, there's a whole host of solutions. No matter what that scenario is, we want to make sure that um, you are, are covered and again, from a scenario of if you do need to move some some uh, some data with Smart Connect, that is um, a powerful tool that can be part of your migration strategy. And, and again, maybe just one little plug for that, right? We talked about the cloud migration tool, being able to move a few of those things, right? Like customers and vendors and accounts. But accounts is a really good example, is that when you're going from Dynamics GP to Business Central, you're gonna have a very different account strategy, right? Where where you may have had segments inside of GP, those now become dimensions. Again, many of you are gonna take this opportunity to reevaluate how you have your account structure uh, laid out. And so um, there's some some real there's some real issues, I guess, and something this is a is a great time to tackle them as you are are choosing to move. So I just want to bring Bring this up is that we basically have the tools for you no matter what your strategy is. Okay, so let's get right into the, the heart of today's session is um, we're going to be using the PopDoc data upload tool uh, quite a bit today. And so I want to talk about a couple different areas. So we're going to start with how do we connect to the data. Um, in the past, even with uh, you know some of the Microsoft tools, there's a really, there's a ton of complexity. I guess, to actually get from the cloud, right, which is where we're going to, back into your on-premise system. The very nature of that conversation introduces a lot of complexity. Um, Microsoft has tried to solve it in a number of different ways, but, but certainly there's a, a lot of um, challenges, I guess, setting that up. We actually had introduced a, a gateway that can be installed and allow you, you know, PopDoc to communicate with your on-premise system that way in a secure manner. But again, there's complexity. And so what we're gonna be introducing now is something that's gonna make that a lot simpler. So again, we're gonna be hooking into your smart list, your favorites, and all of those tables. So what are some key points of, of this approach is that it doesn't require opening your SQL Server um, you know, any ports on a SQL server or again, even a firewall. It doesn't make us, you know, punch any any holes into that um, by using this tool because it changes the, the methodology really from in, in the past where we had a kind of a pull methodology. So we had to have a way of getting into your system to this is more of a push. So you're the one that's controlling when the data should get pushed to the cloud. Another key part is that we're gonna be able to connect to all of your Dynamics GP lists. So what does that mean, right? Every smart list that you, um, you currently use, any ones that were created with smart list builder and even ones that were created with smart list designer, right? Baby smart list builder from Microsoft. All of those lists will be able to be moved um, as well as instead of just the list that you use, we have an option to move all the tables and views. Now, what's important about this, this is way above and beyond some of the other solutions out there because it doesn't just move the Dynamics data, um, this moves all the third-party data, right? So if you have other ISVs out there, um, it will move all of that history as well. And again, even even more more to that, that point, I, th I think is that um, we, we give you the options of if you want to move all of those tables and views or if there's some that you would choose to to skip over okay before we get into demo i want to kind of cover one other part so that was connecting to the data but let's talk about actually moving the data so again this is now moving all those smart lists and favorites and tables to to a data lake so that we can access that uh, a little bit later on okay so again one of the key points here is that this runs in your environment right so it runs on your your network 
Um, it does not need to run on the same machine as your SQL Server, right? It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be a server even, right? It could simply be a workstation um, that where you where you run this from. So just so that you know that this process, you know, kind of simplifies those, those kinds of things because you don't even have to have an additional server. You can actually run it on any existing workstation. Um, we can move the data as fast as it can be extracted. And and then again, as fast as your internet connection to that, that you have to upload to the data lake. So those are kind of two separate pieces, right? There, there are a number of people that, again, here's the reality of it, right? Many of you may have, a, I'll call it a neglected SQL Server. Maybe it's something that's been sitting there for a number of years and maybe hasn't even gotten Windows updates or hasn't gotten any new hardware updates. So it's possible you may have a slower, a slower SQL Server. And so again, as fast as we can extract it out, um, then, then we can do something with it. But if you have slow access to that server, that, that's something that you know certainly will slow slow the process down as as well. And then finally, again, depending on your internet connection to to upload data, you will uh, you will see, I guess, you know, the, the speed on that. And again, and maybe another key part to this too is that this is going to depend on if you have 10 gigabytes of data or if you have a terabyte of data, right? Or, or anything in between, um, it's obviously just gonna, it, it's going to depend on how fast that, that can be uploaded. So just, just to point out those, those things. And then I think another key part too is that we can fix any errors that may happen during this process. So all of this solution comes together really to make this seamless migration from Dynamics GP to Business Central. So let's talk about this first this first section here. Um, let's talk about how we actually go about moving it. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to start this again here. Okay, so what I wanna show you, this is the PopDoc Data Lake Upload Tool. When you log in, you're gonna have options to which thing that you're gonna do. So we're gonna start with, in this example, we're gonna start with the smart lists that we want to move to, to the data lake. So when I hit connect, it's now gonna ask me to log into my PopDoc account, right? So this is directly tied to your PopDoc account. So you'll log into your PopDoc account. If you have more than one account, again, many partners on here may have access to you know, multiple customers. You'll, you'll pick which account it's gonna go into. So it's important to pick the what, right one. And then as I log in, then it's going to ask me, all right, which data lake connector do we want to, to hook into? Okay, there we go. And so you can see now it's pulling all of the list of the data lake connections and I have way too many in, inside of here. Um, but this is the one that I'm gonna be choosing. So you will log in again. So some of the same credentials that you use to set it up inside of PopDoc, which you'll do first, you'll now put in your data lake account, the container that's going into, and then this big, long, ugly key. So once you connect to this though, now we're back to on-premise. This is now basically saying, all right, which version, you pick GP, which version of GP um, are you using? So another big one, right, is what versions does this work for? Well, we've gone as far back as GP9 right now. So if you are on GP9 and up, you should be good. If you are prior to that, we, we might need to look at, you know, something to see if there's any changes in those smart lists that are coming over. But uh, what I'm just saying is that we, we have attested to to a ways back and we can hook into it. So this is what I'm in, in my demo environment. This is the one I'm gonna be choosing. You'll point to your SQL server. Mine has an externally facing thing, but yours for most people is just gonna be their, their locally, um, locally accessible SQL server. 
and you'll log into your Dynamics database. And then you do not have to use an SA password. I think this is a key thing a lot of people get stuck on is that, um, you know, do I need to use SA? No, you don't. It can be a read-only user. Um, the key to it is, is that we have to be able to read the sys tables because we're pulling all the information about all the fields and data types and everything from SQL when we're moving all the tables. And so that's a key component to this is that, um, that whatever user you choose has to have access to the databases, right? So the Dynamics databases and any of your company databases. And then they, we need to make sure that they have rights to, to the sys tables, um, sys objects, I should say, so that we can read all the metadata on, on those tables and views. Okay, so now I'm connecting to, to SQL. And what this is doing now is it's telling me which companies I have. This is really important because you may have a lot of companies, right? You may have some that you haven't used in 10 years, right? You may have a test, a test or a sandbox type of environment. And so some of those, it doesn't make sense to archive. And so you're just asking for um, more space and, and more um, you know, time to move that data. But again, in this example, I'll just choose to move two of them. So I'm moving my main one is Fabric Hammond and I have a little bit of data in this four iron foundry. Then you'll choose which smart lists, right? So this is the smart list portion of this. What, which ones do you want to move? Now you'll notice I have a couple of interestingly named ones, right? These are ones that are coming from um, some of the smart list builder uh, information that I've, again, here's all these EQA ones. This is coming from ones that I built in Smartless Builder. So it will bring all of those in. Again, you, if you are only moving payables data and receivables data and some maybe account transactions, you don't have to move all the rest of these. You can, you can choose to move just the ones that you want. But in this case, I'll choose to do everything. So what you'll see is it's cranking through right now is it's going through each of these lists and it's doing it for each company that I selected. So it's moving all of those those lists. And again, this is probably the biggest data, this biggest one, this account transactions. I have 300,000 rows. You can see that it's um, about halfway right now. So again, probably in about, about 30 seconds, it's going to be done with this list where it is has extracted all of the information out and then is actually uploading to the Azure data lake. Okay, there we go. And now you can see that it's, we're actually getting a status that it is um, being uploaded at this time. I'll just point this out. Like if anybody does have any questions, I would encourage you to ask them in, uh, in the questions section of this, uh, of this webinar. And so happy to, to look at those as we get into it a little bit later. Okay, and this one, like you said, you can see that it's um, it's going to depend on your upload speed. So where I'm at today, uh, looks like I have a little bit slower uh, upload speed going on than, than the office I'm normally at. So it's going to take just a few more seconds longer. But I think a big part to this is um, if any of you have utilized uh, the tools that we've had available up until now, um, that this process would, would take a bit longer as it was just going through a couple more layers. And so instead of just you know happening on your, your network, it was either going through a gateway or, or, or again, a, another service in the middle. And so this, is, this has made it a lot more efficient um, as we're pushing that data up there. Okay, let me, while I'm just waiting for this, this is the big list here. So once this one's done, it, it kind of flies through. You can see we have 306 total lists and we're stuck on on the fifth one. <laughs> so <laughs> once this one goes, everything will kind of just fly afterwards. Okay, got a question out there asking if the data has to go to an Azure environment or can it be saved off to a file somewhere? Okay, that's a really good point. So. What, what it is doing, it is actually extracting everything to CSVs. And so it, there is a folder network um, on, on this hard drive, on my local hard drive, that it is putting everything to. And then it is moving it to an Azure data lake. So there is an option, right? If you wanted to move it somewhere else to another file, you could. Again, some people are actually even um, moving their, maybe a backup 
of their SQL Server. Um, again, most times they're moving it to an Azure Data Lake. The reason we, we, we talk about Azure Data Lakes so much is that they're so cost effective, right? Even for, for most people, if you are storing, let's say 100, 100 gigabytes of data and accessing it you know, tens of thousands of times a month, you're, you're looking at probably for, for most people, way under um, $10 a month, right? So, so it's really, really cost effective storage, even if you have, you know, getting 100 gigabytes of data up there. That's, that's why we've been doing it. We also have some pretty optimized ways of accessing that data. So that's, that's where we've been going at there. Okay, looks like I got another question. I'll, I'll answer that while I'm waiting for a couple more things here. Okay, um, I have a customer that's gonna be shutting down their GP server for good, and which that was currently being hosted. They only need the data for occasional referencing. So this is, this is a great solution for that, right? Because it gives them access to whatever that data is. It, it does not require a GP server to be running. It's just available. Um, in an Azure Data Lake, and they can pull up that list whenever they want. So we'll we'll be getting into to show you how you can access it. All right, you can see that this has um, has uh, gotten quite a bit further after we got past the one really big list. A couple things to point out: it tells you again the remaining lists that that are that are there. So again, we have just under oh pretty quick here, just under 200. Um, you can see that we have one failed list. So we'll be able to go in and look at, at what, what does that mean. And then we have ones that say skipped. Now the key to skipped is basically, if there is no data in, in any of these lists, we're, we're not gonna move it up to the, the data lake. The, the key to that is, again, why I have, um, especially when we start talking about tables, GP has like 2,500 tables in there. Well, if you're not using all those tables in every company, it doesn't make sense to, to move, you know, 2,000 empty tables to, to a data lake, you know, that just have the header information. So we've just put some intelligent stuff inside of there to to really, you know, just skip this stuff and, and not put it up there if it's if it's not needed. Okay, um, here's what I'm gonna do. While, while this is um, just finishing up, I'm gonna talk about a couple more slides here and then we'll come back to this. Okay, so the next part, right, is the accessing it. So one part is actually, you know, connecting to it and moving it to a place where we can now display it. And again, as, as um, the question was just asked, can I turn off that, that GP SQL server at some point in time? For most people, that is that is the goal that they're after, is that they don't, they want to retire that, ser that server and uh, again, just, still be able to have access to some of that data. So how do we access that history inside of Business Central? Um, there's a couple of different ways. I'm gonna kind of give you a quick example of that. We can see, you know, just just the history inside of there. So what, what does that mean, right? Basically, if we moved a particular smart list, or again, maybe even a table, we can see that information and we can see it much like you would experience the, a smart list inside of GP, but now it's embedded inside of Business Central. We can actually combine that information, right, the history, we can combine it with Business Central. And so now you can have one list that has information coming from two very different cases. So in one case, right, we're talking about live BC data, but in the second case, it's GP data that we've archived to a data lake. Or again, it wouldn't have to be. There are some people that choose to keep a SQL server running and then PopDoc just connects directly to that SQL server. So that is an option as well. And then we also have a third option that's really powerful that allows us to filter down these lists um, by customer, vendor, account, wherever we want. So we can basically, we can embed this data on any page inside of Business Central, and we can take you know values from that page to filter down so that we only see that customer's data or that vendor, or again, maybe it's the account history um, on, on that page. We, we can basically just, again, get down to just the data that is needed. All right, so let's, um, let's go back. Let's, I might take a step back and see where we're at with this, okay, it did finish up. 
So again, I talked about what's important, right? We can see we got a few of these, um, a few of these transactions that that failed. Um, a number of them were skipped, and then most of the rest of them were all successful. So these are all the ones that were empty, and then everything else was successful. So this is what's interesting um, is we can see we had one from our main our main company that failed, and then um, from Foreign and Foundry, where actually I don't have um, a lot of data set up inside of there, we're going to find out that these are all legitimate type errors so that we can do something with. So if we wanted to dig in a bit more, we can actually hit view logs. And let me just pull this over to the other screen. Oh, a second, I got layers here. Okay. Okay, so if we go ahead and take a look at this, um, we'll go down to the bottom. Uh, okay, no, oh, this is today's. Okay, sorry, yep. And so I can see there's a couple things um, that we may have. I may have an invalid calculation. It looks like this is coming from a smart list builder uh, list. And so we have an invalid calculation in there. So we might have to go back to the smart list itself and, and see if, um, that we just have a bad list. Uh, this one is again an error in GB4 where I don't have some information set up. So all of these other ones, right, are coming from GB4 where I have either issues in the smart list, um, this one extender, right? I don't have the extender window set up in that company. So these are legitimate errors and are you know, telling me why that list didn't go for that particular company. So it gives pretty, it's pretty descriptive. Now, if we choose to run this again, so I'm, I'm actually just going to start this. I'm not going to go through the whole process on this one, but I can also choose to copy all the tables and views. And so it asks me to, you know, make sure that I'm still going to the same place. Okay, yep, same data lake. Let me go back to the same release here. Okay, but now it looks a little different, right? Now it has all of my databases instead of the companies. And so again, if I don't want to move this company and this company, if I only want to move move my Fabricam and Dynamics, I can choose that. And then, oh, I wasn't going to do this, but <laughs> just to point out, it's now going at the table level as opposed to um, as opposed to all of the lists and you can still choose if you like you can you can choose which ones you want um, but I'm I'm gonna actually cancel this process okay so just to let you know right it's it's now has both of those and and why why do we have both maybe that's a good question um, why do we have both of those scenarios we have it because there's really the lists that people are using today. They're smart lists. And then there's really, I call it the insurance policy, right? As I want to know that if I ever needed to in an audit or wherever, if I needed to go and find a piece of information that maybe wasn't on a smart list, that I could because it's in any of those tables that we've put up there. Okay, so let's jump back to... I said that we could access this information inside of Business Central. That's the whole point we've been trying to make today, right? And so if we look at this, when I click on this pop doc button, I'm getting data inside of here. This is this purchase transaction list happens to be Business Central data, but we're talking about you know historical data. So I'm going to show you, probably just to you know to keep it simple, I'm going to actually show you an interesting list. So I have some of these lists where I have, you know, the account transactions, right? All of that history uh, at the, the detail level. Um, I could do payables, uh, receivables, you know, sales, sales transaction history, any of those kinds of things. I could go to any of those lists, but I'm going to show you this one because this is all of the sales line items, but it's not just from history. This is that, that example that I talked about, a custom list called the merge list, where it's pulling live information from BC and combining it with a history from 
the Azure Data Lake, where, where GP came from. So again, this looks and feels just like Business Central in this example, but it is, again, in this case, you can see these, if we look at the last column, we can see it's coming from Business Central. If we go a few hundred records in, we can now see that these are the ones that came from GP that have been archived to, to the Azure Data Lake. So we now have that combination list that has all of the data that we need to see in one place. We can still do all the things that we need to do to it, right? If we want to filter it down, have as many filters as we want. If we want to group it by item, for example, or by customer or whatever, it makes sense. We can do that. We can get subtotals by item. We have complete control of that. We can, you know, if there's any additional columns, which looks like this one has all of them on, on here, um, we can we can do, we can pull those together. But here's what's different about this list, right? This list is, as I kind of talked about, it's everything inside of here. So it is all of the all of the current BC data and all of the historical GP data. Now that's not maybe how you're going to look for it, right? You could certainly get down to it. You could filter down by by a customer in this case or an item or whatever you wanted to do. Um, that's that's not a problem. But how a lot of people choose to use this is, let's say I actually wanted to know more by customer. I want this to automatically be filtered. So if we go inside of Business Central, which is taking a little bit of time today, okay? I'm gonna pull up one of our classic GP customers that made the migration, right? So here's our good old buddy, Aaron Fitz. that has been around forever in the GP world. He's now come over to Business Central. But what you'll see down below here, we have PopDoc that we have been able to embed inside of here. And I have a few records that are coming from Business Central, right? There's like these first 10 or so, are, all say that they came from Business Central. But then most of the bulk of the history, right? So 100 and probably 120 or 100, 110 of these records came from GP, right? So those are the ones in the data lake. So what we're able to do without writing any AL code at all, we can publish right from PopDoc to say, I want to read the customer number off of here. I'm going to filter this list so that I only see this. Um, I only see the invoices or, or sales transactions for this particular customer. Or again, this is on a customer, but this could be on a vendor, could be on an account, whatever the page is inside of Business Central, we can we can choose to embed that and, and show that information. So I wanted you to be aware of this because I think this is a, a really a key part that we can filter down to just the data that you want to see. Um, and it doesn't have to be just the GP data. It can actually be information coming from the current BC system as well. Okay, um, so another really key part is how, how do you actually go about um, taking taking a list that has has been moved to an Azure data lake, for example, and how am I able, how easy is it to add um, to, to there. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll show you really how, how easy it is to, to add in this scenario. So if I went to, this is my, we call them widgets, right? This is what we have embedded inside of Business Central. So here's all the lists that I have. So I have a bunch of different stuff, right? It doesn't, again, I have some stuff coming from Shopify and you know, whatever, whatever it may be. But if I wanted to add some new data, and I'll just add it from the GP data lake. We added a new, I added, this is the data lake connector that we were pointing to. And there you go, you can see here is all of those lists that we put inside of there. So if you wanted to pull, you know, all the account transaction history, or again, whatever could be, could be some, some project information, whatever, whatever it may be, I can choose to add any of these lists. So here, I'll just add employees for now. And so now we've added employees to the GP data lake. And um, if I have security, right, which we'll find out very quickly here. And there's employees. 
And there we go. Since I only brought over two companies, right? That's that's why I have Fabricam and, and Foundry. So I didn't have my third company. But there you go. Now we're we're seeing data that just a moment ago was sitting inside a GP, and now in the course of this call has been moved to a data lake and now made accessible right inside of Business Central for for all of your people. Okay. So a couple of key points to make on, on really this PopDoc data upload tool. It allows you to securely connect to your Dynamics GP data, again, without poking holes in a firewall, without opening up ports to your SQL server. Um, it it kind of changes the paradigm, if you will, to allow us to connect to that information very, very securely. This is an emphasis, a point of emphasis, right? Is that it's now way quicker and it's way easier to move this information to a data lake with the tool that I just showed you. Because now again, there's not all these hoops of setting up a gateway or or you know some kind of way of getting into the network. And it just it simplifies it not having to set up a web server and all, the, all those, those pieces. So it makes it as fast as you can extract data and as fast as we can upload data. So it's a, again, it takes process that for some people was, you know, was getting into the weeks and now it becomes hours or, or maybe days if you have a huge amount of data. And then I think the key, the last part here is that it's very simple to access and report off of that data um, right inside of BC. So now you have your users don't ever have to leave um, Business Central, right? They have access to all the history right there without having to, you know, log into a terminal server or, or wherever wherever that data has been for today. So that is mainly what I wanted to talk about. I would love to answer any other questions that may, we may have, may have out there. We had a couple that were asked uh, earlier, but if there's some additional questions, I encourage you to put them in the pane. There. Okay, here's another one that was they're asking what versions. We did kind of talk about that a little bit before. Again, any any version we've tested, nine, nine all the way up to 20, 28, 18, or 18.5, I guess I should call it. So basically you'll be able to bring over any any of that data and, and bring that in. Okay, some other questions on how much does a data lake cost? I did briefly mention it before, but again, for most people, right, if you have less than a terabyte of data, um, you're probably going to be spending, you know, less than $20 a month on, on a data lake. There's a few different options on, like, you can set it up with uh, geo redundancy, right? So, which basically means if, if there was something catastrophic that happened to Microsoft's data center, that there would be a backup of, of everything that you had stored at another data center, which basically doubles the cost. So if it was gonna cost you $10 a month, it might cost you $20 a month because you're storing it in another location. Okay, another question is, is there any additional cost for this tool? No, it is, it is actually just part of PopDoc. So if you have a PopDoc subscription, the PopDoc data, up, data lake upload tool is is included in there and so there, there's not an additional charge there is um this is probably worth mentioning we do have a service that we we oftentimes we work with our partners um or kind of an extension of their organization but we do have a service if you want to engage our team where for um, roughly five thousand dollars we're able to you know kind of walk through the whole process help you set up the data lake the connectors and, and run the process and make sure that you have the, the reports and any of those custom reports too that, that you want that maybe maybe be across both the new system and, and the old system. We can help you with all of those those things. So we have, that is an offering that again is available to you. All right, I don't see any other questions. So I wanna thank everybody for their time today. And if you do think of something else, happy to, to answer those in the future as well. So thank you, everyone. And uh, this recording, maybe just a last little thing, this recording will be available and sent out to you uh, shortly after if you want to share with any other members of your team. So thanks, everyone, for coming. We'll talk to you soon.